Welcome back to the shed. So, um, I'm going to be doing uh, just a super quick little build here for you tonight. And here is the, the dilemma that I have and how I'm going to solve it. So, my computer desk, I spend like a good 8, 9, 10 hours a day in front of that computer desk because this is a, well, I'm working from home in, in the shed here. And my floor is just bare cement which gets pretty cold on your toes in the, in, during the day. So I went to the hardware store and I got these panels. So, pull this out here. So these panels, they're two foot by two foot and they've got this foam and then the plywood. So they're like an insulated subfloor panel. So you use them when you want to do like a floating subfloor on a cement. So I'm, I got six of them. So I'm going to wind up with a space about four by six. So that's going to carry me under the desk and then out here to about where that vacuum is. Which is going to be like a perfect little platform for my computer chair so my feet won't be cold all winter. Last winter I did not do this, and uh, this winter I'm thinking ahead. So, now, in order to make it a little more fun, I, uh, what I want to do is I want to put... So just putting these on the floor on their own is not enough, because the tongue and groove, they're going to expand and move around. So I have to put another layer of plywood on top of them, so I got this. So it's just some thin mahogany flooring underlay. Looks like it's about maybe, uh, I don't know, a quarter inch thick. And my the trunk of my car does not fit a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood. So I had to have it cut up into some smaller pieces here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the camera onto the tripod, clear this out a little bit, and then you'll see me put this all together. So, just... Uh, Bear with me for a quick second here. <clears throat> okay, so I just want to show this to you. In case you've ever, uh, in case you want to do something like this for yourself in your own shed or workspace. So, this panel, how am I going to get this into frame here? So, this panel, it's got a tongue and groove, okay? So, a couple corners have the tongue, a couple corners have the groove, right? So, the idea is you butt them up against each other, tongue and groove style. Then you tie them together. So, I'm going to have six of these, so I need to make sure that I get my tongue and groove pattern right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my tongues up and to the left. And that way I've always got my grooves on the bottom side. I need to get my hammer out.
Okay, so. Turn this around here so I can see. So, just so that you're aware, as I'm working on this, I am not going to be doing a professional installation here. I'm doing this as a platform for the shed. I'm not making the base for a floor in the house where I would want to put a little more effort into things. So, if I was to be doing a proper professional job, I would make sure that my tongue and groove gets a lot tighter. Um, using probably like a rubber mallet, but for this job, uh, I don't really care too much if my sub four panels are a little bit off, because I'm doing this to make a platform for the chair for the shed. It doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to not fall apart. <laughs> Plus, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but I have a huge, um, well, there's like a, a fault line in the cement floor here. You can see it right there. So, I'm going to have one, so there's going to be a, a couple pieces here are going to be like a good half an inch, quarter of an inch or so lower than the other pieces. Now... It has been driving me nuts that my chair would get, the well, wheels of my chair would get stuck in that crack. So one nice thing about this solution is because I'm going to be putting a little bit of a, like an underlay floor on top of this, I'm going to get rid of that, that uh, issue with the chair getting stuck, which is going to be nice. Here, there's a full, I can get my, my fingers under here. So, if I was doing this properly, I'd probably shim it up a little bit, but you know what, I'm just doing a, a quick and dirty job. And we'll see what happens. What's the worst that could happen, alright? Okay. So that's more or less good enough. Now, what we need to do, my subfloor panels. So like I said, my car does not fit a 4x8 sheet. In fact, my car barely fit a 3 foot in between the back seats when I folded it down. So what I did was I had them cut into one foot panels and then two foot panels. So I'm going to do one panel there one panel there another panel here last panel up at the top. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, by doing it this way, here's, here's the method to my madness, okay? I'm going to have a one foot across the bottom, which then I'm going to have this cross member here, right? So the center of that is going to be covered 
by my two foot panel. So this way, I'm always going to have like the center part, this part that's going to buckle and shift around on me, covered by a piece of the underlay. At least that's the theory anyway, that's the, the plan. I also got a whole box of screws, so I'm also going to put a uh, hundred screws in this thing to, hold, to make sure it's all good and tight. So, time for that to begin. Okay. No, I don't care about this being exactly perfectly square. Down here in this corner, I've got a little bit of an overhang, that's fine. As long as I can tell where the corners are. Okay, so the the foam and the plywood is one inch. This underlay board is, I want to say, maybe a quarter of an inch. I got one inch screws. So that should do perfectly fine.
and there we have it. So, again, this is by no means the right way to do this. I clearly am cutting a couple of corners here, literally and figuratively. And it definitely, it looks like what it is. It's a sheet of wood on the floor. But here's the big thing. Once I get my office chair on there, it will do exactly what I need it to do. Okay, so I can now move that chair around nice and smooth, and I'm not going to have the cold from the cement leaching into my boots. Yes, it has a little wobble, yes it squeaks, but here's the the thing I like about it, in the spring, when I eventually make a mess of that board, this board is relatively cheap. I think this was uh, less than $30 for that sheet of wood. And I can just have it cut to another one foot section, another two foot section. I have an extra two foot over there. So if, like, as I track mud and dirt and junk on here, if I scuff this up, all I gotta do, take those screws up, put down my, my, my new panel, and then good as new. So, this is gonna do exactly what I need it to do. Now, in the interest of full disclosure here, I did pay for this out of my own money. Uh, I bought everything, well, I bought the wood and the screws from my local home hardware. Uh, they're not sponsoring me. So, uh, by the way, home hardware, if you're listening, you know, maybe give me a call. But anyway, I just wanted to do a quick little video because this is something that I think anyone who works in a shed or a garage workspace for any amount of time really needs to consider doing this because that cement floor will leach the cold right through into your feet. I cannot tell you how long I spent all winter with that heater on full blast, or the space heater on full blast, and yet my feet were just chilly and damp and icy cold all day simply because I was on the bare cement. So this, with that insulation, this is going to be a game changer for me for this winter. And, I'm still more than far enough away from my wood stove for my uh, tolerances for the, for the fire break. And, when I, if I eventually um, break this down, if I eventually need to um, rebuild this or whatever, it's super fast, super quick. I mean, I haven't even opened a beer yet, and I've already got the job done. So, anyway... Thanks for hanging out with me in the shed tonight, and uh, we'll see you later. Safe travels.